Hi and welcome to the second of the screencasts uh, that covering the A-level PE spec and in this session we're looking at muscles and movement. So the assumed knowledge for this session is the names of the bones, uh, the joints and the major muscles. So if you just need to recap those, pause the screencast and have a look at uh, the names of the bones there or the names of the joints. Okay, so we're looking at the major muscles. Now there are some changes from GCSE to A-level and it's clearly in the detail. So, things that we really need to focus on are the quadricep group there and also the hamstring group. You can see that now we've got the individual names of the muscles and not just the group, so vastus medialis, lateralis, and also bicep femoris as well. So, go over the names of each one of those muscles. Also, notice that the, you've got the bicep brachii and tracheae now. Okay, and the other major differences as well, let's have a look at the deltoid here. Now what we say instead of just saying the deltoid is we identify each one of the different sections. So you've got the medial deltoid which allows a lateral raise and you have the anterior deltoid which is allowing your arm to move upwards and forwards and the posterior deltoid and this is for the arm to be moved backwards. So that extra detail is where we're looking. All right and the other thing we need to now start focusing on is the creation of the movement. So for this to happen, our muscles work in pairs, and I'm sure you already know that they can only pull. And these are known as agonistic pairs. So the agonist, which is also known sometimes as the prime mover, is the one that's going to contract to allow that uh, movement to occur. Now it can be a contraction or a movement, but we'll look at that in the next screencast. So within this picture here, you can see that the agonist will be the one that's contracting and that, as the arrow shows, will draw the arm upwards and also identify here as well that we have the tricep working as its pair, so it's agonistic pair and the, the one that's relaxing is known as the antagonist. So the agonist is the contracting one, the antagonist is relaxing. Now let's look at some of these in practical examples. So you've got this guy here, there's a, uh, an extension at the knee there, we've got the lateral raise and we're also lifting uh, our legs up. So pause the screencast, have a go at those. Alright, so as you can see here, uh, we've got the agonist that's working, that's allowing the muscles to, uh, allowing the knee to straighten there. And we've also identified the antagonist and exactly the same for the lateral raise. So we're always looking at the pairings of one that's contracting and allowing the movement to occur and then the other one that is going to be relaxing. And just be really, really careful with those terms that we're talking about, relaxation and movement of muscles working in pairs. Okay, so if you're not sure, go back over these and I'm sure you'll pick them up no problem at all. All right, so the next thing we're looking at is the planes of movement. And these are very, very important and new for this specification. And we have the transverse, we have the sagittal and the frontal plane. So the transverse plane, this is the, where we're allowing uh, a type of rotation to take place. And this could be uh, moving our, our wrists. It could be uh, like a twisting action. We also have the, the frontal plane. And for this one, uh, you're looking at side to side movements. So if you're having a lateral raise, that would, uh, that would be appropriate. And then the last one is the sagittal plane. And this is where we have a forwards and backwards action. So that's the easiest way to remember those. Now let's look at those in practical uh, situations, sporting examples. So here obviously there's a rotation. So hopefully we can identify that this would be in the transverse plane. Uh, another example here, let's say a hook in, in boxing. So we've got the arm moving round, so that's an element of rotation there. So for the frontal, as we mentioned, is moving left and right. So clear example here, hockey goalkeeper reaching out with their left leg to try and stop the ball. And then is the sagittal plane, which is double T. And here you're moving from the back to the front. You might recognize this guy here. And you can see that it's clearly moving from the back to the front. All right, so the other things that we need to identify really for analysis is the types of movement that are taking place. I'm sure you'll know a lot of these from GCSE. So here 
when there is a shortening at a joint, well, this is known as a flexion or a decrease in the angle is a better way of putting it. Now, let's not just focus on um, the simple hinge joints here. Let's have a look here. See, we've got a shortening of the joint as the leg is raised there. So there is a flexion at the hip joint. Even though it's a ball and socket, you can still have flexion. And then you can also have an extension, which is an increase in the size. So that would be the reverse, obviously, here for the bicep and tricep. But also here, as the leg moves backwards, we're increasing the size of the angle at this point here. So therefore, there is an extension at the hip joint. Just an example there of a different joint instead of just doing the traditional ones. All right, moving on very quickly then. So we've got the abduction and adduction. This is taking away or adding to the mass of the body. So in this one, we've got the lateral raise, very straightforward one. And a rotation, you can have a rotation at the neck. And this is where we're pivoting around a particular axis, a single point. All right, and again, rotation, round a particular point. But this is medial and lateral rotation. So moving towards the midline or laterally, you're moving away. And again, just examples of different joints. So this one here, we've got uh, plantar flexion, as if we're planting our toes on the floor, and we've got dorsiflexion, where we're raising our toes. We really need to know all of these technical terms for our analysis. Now this one here, we've got pronation, where our palms go down, or supination, as the thumbs up, we call it super, or you can remember it as a bowl of soup. Okay, getting towards the end of these now. So here we've got horizontal flexion and extension. So as the arm moves across our body, we say that we've got flexion. And this is a really good example in tennis. If we're just doing a forehand, the board, your, your arm is moving across back into the midline and we call that horizontal flexion. Okay, so with all of these things, let's look at the practical application. And here we're looking at our analysis. All of that stuff put together. So first of all, what's the plane that this bowler is bowling in? So it's from front to back. So that would be the sagittal plane. Right, good. Now, the muscles. What muscles are pulling that arm forwards? The muscles on the front of the deltoid. So that would be the anterior deltoid and also probably the pectoralis major. And these are the agonists because they're the prime movers. They're the ones that are creating it. So the antagonists on the other side, the opposite. So we could say that that would be the posterior deltoid and also the trapezius as well. And then the types of movement. So we've got a shortening of the angle at the shoulder joint there. So we're going to turn around and say that that's a flexion at the shoulder. All right. So uh, what I'd like you to do is have a look at these two particular joints. Pause the screencast. I'll just circle them here. Pause the screencast and have a go and see if you can identify all of those aspects. All right. So hi. Uh, so the planes for this one will be front to back. So that's sagittal. The muscles for that one is going to be the quadricep group. Now remember, name all of the muscles to score. If you don't, then you're not going to score points on your on your tests. And then the antagonist is, again, all of the hamstring groups because it's the opposite. And then finally, the type of movement what we're looking at there is an extension at the knee joint. OK, so you can have a go at the shoulder one yourself. OK, so just to recap what we've been through, and there has been quite a few. So there's names of all the muscles. Remember, the hamstrings and the quad strip group are very important and also the deltoids. We've got the definition, the agonist, the antagonist and the planes of movement and the types of movement as well. And there's just a couple of examples there. Remember, practical application is where you're going to score your marks. All right. Thanks very much. And I'll speak to you soon.